Podcast. Welcome back to part 5 of the series. In this part, we'll finally be able to test our solver on a particle sim. But before we get to do the fun stuff, let's do a bit of a cleanup on our file first. So before we move on, let's do a bit of housekeeping on our setup and clean things up a bit. So we're setting a random p scale up here. So let's name it set p scale rand. Let's also color our important notes. And at the moment we do set another p scale down here. So let's cut this constant p scale. Let's grab another switch and make a copy of our random p scale. Move it over here. Let's call it set p scale. And we'll set our constant p scale here. Let's switch it to points. Let's create a slider for our constant p scale. Generate that slider. Let's set it to point one again. And we only need our attribute promote for our random values that are generated on the primitives. And on the left side, we already have it on the points. So let's connect both of these to the switch. Make a bit of room up here. So now we can have a random or a constant p-scale. So let's connect our output and name our switch, switch p-scale. So next, our cars get raised up and projected on our array. So let's call it project nm path. And on this wrangle, we do the surface offset. So let's call it offset nm. After this, we extract our point. So let's call it extract enum points, do the trail, and then we do set our orientation. So set orient, and we do have a randomized one over here. So let's call this one set orient rand and also color this red. And we do get our surface normal with this ray. Let's uh, move this after the switch. It's a bit redundant in this case, but um, if we don't have a surface normal from our particle sim, we can get our surface normal with uh, this ray sub. On this wrangle, let's get rid of uh, this line where we create a surface normal. So we just create our random orientation on this wrangle here. Remember that earlier we didn't have a surface normal. So let's quickly look at that case where we don't have a surface normal. Let's grab a attrib delete and delete our surface normal and see what that looks like. On our ray sub, we still do have the surface normal and on the attrib delete, we don't anymore. So let's quickly add a visualizer for our surface normal. Let's turn on the visualizers that we have at the moment. So the normal and the up vector. So let's add one for our surface normal. Let's um, change the color of it. Let's set it to red. Also scale it down to 0.1. Show the arrow tips. So if we do get rid of these surface normals on our attrib delete, we don't have them anymore. But we do use a surface normal in our solver. So maybe now is a good moment to kind of prepare when we don't have a surface normal, because if we don't have a surface normal, you remember that the rotation doesn't work. So in this case, let's not directly use the attribute down here, but let's create another vector called SN. And for this, we want to use 
the surface normal attribute if it exists and if it doesn't exist we'll check for this with has point attrib 0 sn so if it does exist we want to take our existing surface normal and if it doesn't exist let's set it to 0 1 0 like we had before so let's jump out reset on the solver and let's see what it's doing without the surface normal so in this case it's using the backup surface normal that we created if there isn't an existing one so let's disable the delete so we do have a surface normal from our race up let's hit reset and check again and this is working as well another thing to keep in mind is maybe that it's a good idea to normalize our normal and up before we do anything with them so let's normalize our normal normalize and normalize our normal lies our up vector as well and let's also move this normalize function up here as well normalize and we can also just to be thorough since we update our surface normal write it out again like this so now if we take a look at our visualizers we do have all our attributes up here let's check if it's working when we don't have our surface normals reset and in this case it's working as well great so with our cleanup done, let's move on and uh, take a look at the particle sim. All right, so we'll start with a circle to emit our particles from. Let's have a look at our surface here. Disable the visualizers and get rid of our animation paths. Let's change the radius to two and add a scatter after our circle. Let's change the orientation of the circle to ZX. Maybe less points, 250 for now. Let's grab a attrib adjust float to generate a random P scale. Let's set it to random. So at the moment we can see the P scale. So let's uh, add another wrangle and set it to detail and we'll create an integer attribute called gl sphere points and set it to one so we have a preview of our uh, p scale value so now that we do have our visualizer for the p scale let's set the min value to 0 0.05 the max value to 0.1 that's all right for now. Let's also add a merge so we can preview our particles on the surface. Let's move our particles up a bit so there's a bit of room for them to fall down onto the surface. So that's looking good for now. We do have our points. Let's add a pop net. So let's dive inside and in our popnet we want to emit from all our points but only on the first frame. Let's add a gravity force as well. Hit play. All right, that's looking good. We don't need the guide. Let's bring in our collider so static object let's create a merge and merge in the static object in our pop solver hit shift r to reverse 
Next, we need to reference our surface. So let's jump back out and let's add a null and call it surface. And we'll connect all these wires to our surface. So let's jump back in and grab our surface. And let's also change the collision detection to surface collisions. Let's have a look. All right, so we do have colliding particles. One thing you'll notice is that the particles are still intersecting. So let's change that now by adding a pop grains. And on our pop grains, keep in mind that we don't have a uniform radius. They are all random, so disable the checkbox. Let's see. All right. And let's add some movement to the particles so that they are not just falling down. So let's use a axis force for that. Let's reorganize things a bit. All right. So on the axis force, let's not use a sphere, but a torus as a shape. So they travel on a path around the center. Let's see if that does anything. Not too much at the moment. So maybe let's increase the lift speed to three. And also, as they're clinging a bit to the surface, let's reduce the friction, 2.2. See, that's not looking too bad. Let's increase the radius a bit to 1.5 maybe. And also the suction speed so they're gathering a bit more on that circular path. All right, so that should work for now. Let's jump out, have a look at our setup and see where we want to bring in our particles. So up here, we do have our setup for the animation path. Up until after we offset the points, extract the points and add the velocity on the trail. We do have a velocity. Let's quickly check on our points. Search for the velocity. So there they are. So we don't need the trail stop. So let's add another switch just before our random orientation. So this switch lets us choose if we want to use the points from our particle sim or our animation paths. So let's set it to one to use our particle sim. All right, so we're using the second input for our popnet. On the next switch, we're doing the random orientation. So let's see if this is working. Let's look at our preview and hit play. All right, so that's moving quite slowly. On our copy to points, you'll notice that we didn't pack our spheres because before we had just four or five of them. But now we definitely want to pack them so we just have a pack primitive that gets instanced with the copy to points on our particles up here. So let's have a look. And that's running much faster now. We do have our caster, so let's get rid of that. And if we take a closer look at what the particles are doing, our spheres are 
rotating and rolling quite nicely. So let's on the scatter just increase the number of particles a bit. Let's decrease the P scale and let's see if that works. Hit play again so that fast pass is taking a little bit of time but once the particles are cached it's running in real time. All right, so straight out of the box, what we did with our animation paths is working quite nicely with our particle sim. So now for our solver, it doesn't really matter where the points are coming from, whether it's from a animation path or from a simulation. So one thing I noticed when I did the uh, final renderings is that on our PopNet we're not just importing all the particles but the collision geometry as well. So if we take a look at the copy to points here and show our points, we do see that we have tiny spheres instanced on our collision geometry as well. So one way to fix this would be to either type pop and an asterisk for all popped objects in our object mask or dive in and disable the display geometry on the static object. Now that our server works on particle sims as well, let's take a look at what changes we need to make to rotate disk-like objects such as coins or wheels. See you in the next part.